1st of February, 1936. Talk number 152. Mrs. Kelly desired to know how she should best learn to meditate. Sri Bhagavan asked if she had made japa, that is, rolling beads, as the Roman Catholics do. She said, No. Maharshi, have you thought of God, his qualities, etc.? Devotee, I have read, talked, so on, about such themes. Maharshi, well, if the same be revolved in the mind without open expression through the senses, it is meditation. Devotee, I mean meditation as signified in the secret path, and who am I? Maharshi, long for it intensely so that the mind melts in devotion. After the camphor burns away, no residue is left. The mind is the camphor. When it has resolved itself into the self without leaving even the slightest trace behind, it is realization of the self. 4th of February, 1936 Talk number 153 Some Peshawaris, among them a judicial commissioner and a young man well-read and earnest with a strong belief in the existence of Paramatman, Supreme Self, as different from the Jiva Atman, Individual Self, raised some questions. Sri Bhagavan clinched his various doubts by this one statement. Remove all the adjuncts, Jiva and Parama, from the Atman and say if you still find the difference. If later these doubts still persist, ask yourself, who is the doubter? Who is the thinker? Find him. These doubts will vanish. 5th of February, 1936. Talk number 154. The next day he asked about pranayama. Maharshi, pranayama, according to Gyana, is na aham, I am not this, on the out-breathing, koham, who am I, on the in-breathing, and soham, I am he, on the retention of breath. This is vichara. This vichara brings about the desired result. For one not so advanced as to engage in it, some meditation brings about suspension of breath and the mind ceases to be restless. Control of mind spontaneously affects control of breath. Rather, spontaneous retention of breath without attention to inhalation or exhalation results. For one unable to do this also, Regulation of breath is prescribed for making the mind quiescent. Quiescence lasts only so long as the breath is controlled, so it is transient. The goal is clearly not pranayama. It extends on to pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, and samadhi. Those stages deal with the control of mind. Such control becomes easier for the person who has earlier practiced pranayama. Pranayama leads one to the higher stages involving control of mind. Therefore, control of mind is the aim of yoga also. A more advanced man will naturally go direct to control of mind without wasting his time in practicing control of breath. A simple development of pranayama alone may confer siddhis, which so many hanker for. When asked if there are any food restrictions, Sri Bhagavan said, agreeable food in moderate quantity. When asked about the efficacy of bhakti, Sri Bhagavan said, 
So long as there is vibhakti, there must be bhakti. So long as there is viyoga, there must be yoga. So long as there is duality, there must be God and devotee. Similarly also in vichara. So long as there is vichara, there is duality too. But merging into the source there is unity only. So it is with bhakti too. Realizing the God of devotion, there will be unity only. God too is thought of in and by the self. So God is identical with the self. If one is told to have bhakti for God and he does so straight away, it is all right. But there is another kind of person who turns round and says, There are two, I and God. Before knowing the far-off God, let me know the more immediate and intimate I. For him, the vichara marga has to be taught. There is, in fact, no difference between bhakti and vichara. Talk number 155. The same man again asked about the nature of samadhi and the means to get samadhi. Maharshi, when the one who asks the nature of samadhi and the method of getting into it vanishes, samadhi will result. Major Chadwick, it is said that one look of a Mahatma is enough, that idols, pilgrimages, etc. are not so effective. I have been here for three months, but I do not know how I have been benefited by the look of Maharshi. Maharshi, the look has a purifying effect. Purification cannot be visualized. Just as a piece of coal takes long to be ignited, a piece of charcoal takes a shorter time, and a mass of gunpowder is instantaneously ignited, so it is with grades of men coming in contact with Mahatmas. Mr. Cohen asks, I get into meditation and reach a point which may be called peace and a contemplative mood. What should be the next step? Maharshi, peace is self-realization. Peace need not be disturbed. One should aim at peace only. Devotee, but I do not have the satisfaction. Maharshi, because your peace is temporary, if made permanent, it is called realization.